If you've been looking around at jobs in the marketing data space, then I am sure you've seen tons about omni-channel analytics, but you may not be sure exactly what those are or how they're useful in increasing sales and marketing ROI. So let's cover that in really fast in today's quick video. For the very best data leadership and business building advice, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when a new episode drops each week. Who am I to tell you anything about omni-channel analytics anyway? Well, we have used omni-channel analytics in our marketing strategy to grow my business at Data Mania to multiple six figures, as well as our data communities out to 650,000 data professionals. Hi, I'm Lillian Pearson, and I support data professionals with becoming world-class data leaders and entrepreneurs. In all honesty, the data professional in me wants to jump straight to channel scoring from your omni-channel analytics, but that's really putting the cart before the horse. So let's start from the very beginning, shall we? I promise to cover channel scoring for you in the next video, and I'm going to give you a sneak peek inside of our omni-channel analytics, and then I'll go ahead and explain everything step by step. The first thing we're going to talk about today is the difference between sales and marketing channels. And so what I thought I'd do is just show you around Segmetrics, which is the tool we use to, to track our sales and leads. And as you can see, we've got here uh, 505 leads, and then it's broken down according to all of the channels um, through which these leads came, as well as the lead value. So we can then start getting an idea of how well each of these channels is performing. And you see these are like mostly social media channels, how they're performing with respect to sales. But if we were looking at a sales channel exclusively, we might want to use something like this. Google Data Studio dashboard, which don't mind the numbers so much here because um, I actually need to reset these goals for a new opt-in freebie. But down here, you can see goal number, the last goal, sales page to purchase conversion rate. So the conversion rate on this is 7.11, which is decent. But anyway, my, my whole thing here is that we're looking at, okay, someone hits, if we have 51 people hit the actual sales page, 7.1% uh, of them, 11% of them are actually converting. So this is telling me how the distribution site where the sale is actually made, that page or that funnel, how it's actually performing, which is good. These numbers here are not reflective of anything because of course they're off, like I mentioned. And then the other thing that we are gonna talk about is basically looking at the channels uh, themselves. So you really gotta have a very good grasp on what's happening with each of your social media channels or each of your channels, wherever you're getting leads and sales from. So uh, this is only one of my channels. This is my Instagram channel. So we use later to track how the content is performing. And, you know, you have to kind of just play with this. Okay, so now that you've seen channel analytics from the back end, let's move forward and talk about what are channels, what are channel analytics, and how do they actually work together to increase marketing and sales ROI? We'll start first by defining what is a channel. When it comes to scorable omni-channel analytics, when we use the word channel, we're referring to either a marketing channel or a sales channel. Now, when we talk about sales channels, what we're really talking about is the point of sale or the area, the location where a sale is made and a product or service is distributed. So that could be your website somewhere inside your funnel if you're selling digital products or services or even e-commerce products. If you have brick and mortar stores, then your brick and mortar stores would be your actual sales channels. And then if you use sales calls or live events to make sales in your business, then each of those would be considered sales channels as well. Now, marketing channels are the channels through which people are made aware of your products and services. It's where you are generating leads and sometimes warming people up for the sale. So any website traffic that you're getting from SEO or search engine optimization, that would be considered a marketing channel, as well as any website traffic you're getting from social media sites like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of that. Any live events are most certainly going to be marketing channels for your business, as well as referral websites. Lastly, but not least, there are the paid ads channels, which are indeed marketing channels as well. Now that you know what channel is, let's look at what it means to be omni-channel. The omni-channel approach to marketing is based on the premise that you and your business want to show up and meet its customers exactly where they're at. This, of course, involves meeting them across more than one channel. So this sort of approach assumes that you've got multiple channels through which you're engaging with your customers or your prospective customers and that you've taken the time to identify what your customers are looking to see on each of those various channels. That kind of goes back to the later example I just showed you where I look through and I look at the content to try and see what exactly people are looking for on the Instagram channel. You need to be doing that on each of the channels where you're actually engaging with your customer. 
This is so that you can show up and give a unique experience on a channel by channel basis for each of your customers. You want them to really understand that you know what their expectations are, that you understand why they're in a particular channel, what they're trying to get from being in that channel, and that you are there to support them on every level. This really goes back to the fact, if you think of uh, marketing as a user instead of a marketer, you know, everyone goes to each channel for different reasons, right? You don't go to Instagram for the insane attention. You would go to LinkedIn. Generally, we're all looking for something separate, like Twitter is for news. Facebook's got a lot of community, friends, family. Instagram is, of course, photos and lots of different fun communities there. And then LinkedIn is like the uber professional uh, the professional net networking site, right? So when you are building your channel strategy, you want to make sure that your your marketing strategy and that your marketing content is reflective of the reason your customers are showing up there. And it's not a one size fits all solution. You actually have to look at the analytics inside each of the different channels to figure out what your customers specifically are looking for from you in each of those different touch points. Speaking of omni-channel, aren't we all pretty much omni-channel on social media these days? Yes, of course we are. So I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Tell me which is your favorite social media channel and why. Okay, so now that you know what a channel is and omni-channel marketing, let's look at omni-channel analytics. These are the analytics that tell you exactly what your customers are looking for from you or your company on a channel-by-channel -channel basis. And it's not just about marketing either. You really have to go in and make sure that your omni-channel analytics and your channel scoring, which we're talking about in the next video, are firmly rooted in the number of leads and sales that that marketing is generating for your business. Of course, as you've seen, a quick tip on the tools we use in my business, those are Segmetrics and of course, Google Analytics and Google Data Studio. Now, there are tons of tools out there for omni-channel analytics. The thing is that most of them are very expensive. So depending on the size of your budget, the, the size of the company you're working for, um, you just want to make sure that you have the capabilities you need and aren't spending too, too much money. Unless, of course, you have oversized tools, which is awesome for you. Now, in terms of sales channels, that's like what we looked at over in the Google Data Studio, where I showed you the conversion rate for the sales page, as well as sales analytics that are reflective of actual sales that are made straight off of each of the marketing channels. So that would have been what I showed you inside of Segmetrics. Just to put things in perspective for you, all of our marketing is organic. We don't have paid ads running, so there's no need to back calculate um, ads cost against revenue to figure out the true performance of each of the marketing channels because we just don't have that. But if your company is running ads, then you want to make sure to subtract out the ads cost from the revenues generated per channel just because you want to be comparing apples to apples. Now, if you are loving all this talk about how to use data to inform strategy, then I definitely think you're going to love the video I did on evergreen data strategies. I will link to it in the description below as well as put it in the cards to this video. Now, I just wanted to go over some of the data with you inside of my backend just to help you understand how you would make sense of it in your own. So in terms of the omni-channel analytics for our marketing channels and which of them are actually converting it to sales, as you can see, we're getting sales on our website and they're not just coming from nowhere. Most of them are actually coming from our marketing channels. So as you can see here, our sales are actually coming from SEO, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and then referral traffic. And it's really, really important to double down on the channels that are doing well for several reasons. One of which is that you want to look at the potential customers that are in those channels and make sure that what you're providing them along those channels actually meets their expectations and needs, as well as preferences for what they want to see in that location. And two, you want to make sure to be looking at these numbers because you can see areas where you might be getting a big return on your investment. Say you're not putting too, too much energy into that marketing channel, but it's doing performing really well. That's great. You want to like just keep nurturing that but then there will be underperforming at channels and you want to adjust your strategy and tweak and change to try and get all of the channels you know performing as well as possible so now after watching this video when you are scrolling the job boards and you see that they're looking for a data person that is experienced with and knows how to do omni channel analytics you know what that means if you have been enjoying this conversation on web analytics and omni channel analytics and getting those sneak peeks behind the scenes in our tools then i know for sure you're going to love the data entrepreneur toolkit that's a collection of the third two very best tools out there to grow your data business. It's the ones that we use to hit multiple six figures in my business. And I'm giving those recommendations away for free. Um, you can get the toolkit in the description below. We'll put a link there. And if you like this video, be sure to show it some love by giving it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below telling me what you'd like me to teach you more about in the marketing data space. And of course, subscribe to my channel so you'll be the first to know when the next episode drops.